Welcome to Fiddleback Friday again. We've got it for September 6, 2019. And if you guys are subscribed to the newsletter, you have already seen the awesome picture preview. Or if you follow us on Blade Forum, you've seen it there as well. Uh, it's a small batch this week, but it is, they're awesome. They're really awesome this week, um, as they are every week. But uh, this batch is pretty special, as you'll see here in just a second. Um, you may see a very special guest pop his head in every once in a while. We've got the uh, one and only Phil I.P. up in the house. So he decided to show up for the show today. I don't think he's going to do much because he's, he's kind of taking it easy. Had a big lunch. So uh, <laughs> we're going to get into it, show you these knives. There's 10 Fiddleback Forge knives today. Um, there's one from Joey Berry. This one is not a kitchen knife. So if you're looking for an outdoor knife from Joey, um, this one's pretty awesome. I think you're going to dig it. It's in CPM 154, as I'll go over uh, here very shortly. If you've got any questions, if you're watching on Facebook uh, during the live show that we're doing at 3 p.m., um, just go ahead and answer the questions. I'll try to, try to get to them uh, as the broadcast is going. Um, if you have any questions and you're watching this later on on YouTube or Instagram, uh, just hit us up on instant message on either one of those platforms or email us at support at fiddlebackforge.com and uh, we'll answer any questions that you may have. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it and show you the first knife coming up. Uh, this one's going to be the Pack Rat. So the Pack Rat uh, don't make very often. It's a relatively new design. Uh, came out at the end of last year, if I remember correctly. Uh, there's not been a whole lot of them. Um, this one's got a turquoise burlap on it, a natural canvas for the bolsters and the liners. Um, this color combo is just really popping. I'm trying to show you here uh, the spalting, the 3D spalting that we do on that. Um, this one turned out really, really interesting. It's got some really deep, large spalting to it. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, if you're looking for just a great uh, pack knife, obviously, is what this is meant to be, uh, being named the Pack Rat. Um, it's just an all-around really great handy uh, woods knife and a good EDC carry as well. Um, so it'll be handy on a belt, it'll be handy in a pocket sheath, uh, however you choose to carry it. Uh, showing you the balance point of it right there, it's just behind the second, or just before the second set of pins uh, on the bolster. Uh, so it's got a very neutral feel in hand, uh, just a great, great all-around knife. The skeletonized full tang. Uh, that one's got the Trinity pin out, as you can see on the turquoise there where you see the three pins. We call that the Trinity pin out. Um, just a fantastic Fantastic little knife. So that is the Pack Rat in turquoise burlap. And let me look up real quick before I move on. It's an eighth inch A2 uh, and skeletonized full tang, as I said. So this next one, if you are uh, looking for something to break down small game, uh, it's the F2. It's called the F2 because it stands for fish and fowl. Uh, so it's literally made for breaking down uh, bird and fish. So this one is based on the Hike and Buddy model. So the handle, if you're familiar with the Hike and Buddy or you've held the Hike and Buddy before, um, is the exact same handle. So it's going to be, feel very comfortable, very familiar. It's probably one of the most friendly handle designs as far as feeling really good in just about everybody's hand. Um, it's got the nice upswept tip there, of course. This one's natural canvas micarta. Uh, it's got black liners and orange pinstripes on this one. And it is in... Let's see, 330 seconds A2. So it's going to be real slicey dicey being in 330 seconds there. And it's just, like I said, it's comfortable in just about every grip you can possibly hold it. There you see the balance point is right at that second set of pins. So you get most of the weight in the handle, which you would imagine would be the case with a blade shape like that. Um, just a great, great all around knife. I own one personally, really love it. Um, I actually like to carry it for daily tasks too. As long as you're not using the tip as a pry bar, you're good to go. You're good to go. So moving on to the next one, uh, and that's probably the, this one here, the F2 is probably, I think the smallest one we have this week. So this week we've got some of the mid-sized to larger knives. Uh, so if that's what you're looking for going into uh, fall hunting season or fall outdoor season, you're going to be happy with this batch. Um, so this one is the Kephart. Now, if you're a fan of a Kephart design, quote unquote, um, you'll know that it was originally designed by Horace Kephart. Uh, go look them up on Wikipedia and learn about that. 
I don't want to get into a whole bunch of it here, but you will immediately notice if you're familiar with that type of design that Andy's design is quite different. He wanted to approach it in the spirit of the Kephart more than trying to do a replica Kephart. So a few years ago, he pulled this one off. Uh, this has got more of a spear point uh, than a regular Kephart does, which is more of a leaf shape point. Um, full four inch blade, about a four and a half inch handle roughly. Uh, you can check the uh, newsletter or the blog post on our website that we put out earlier today uh, if you want the exact specs on this um, as far as links and, and that kind of thing. Um, this one in particular, as far as handle material goes, is OD Canvas Micarta. And it's got black liners, orange pinstripes, and it's one eighth inch A2 steel with some beautiful spalting. Um, just a fantastic knife. Kephart is a fan favorite for good reason. It's awesome. So here's another showstopper. So this is the Bush Hermit, which if you've watched our uh, Friday show before, you've seen uh, quite a bit. It's one of the most popular models that we have, uh, and for good reason. It's kind of the culmination of all the things that Andy's learned over the years of doing bushcraft style knives, uh, all kind of combined into one one thing is the, the handle's super comfortable no matter how you hold it it's great no matter what kind of task you're doing with it uh, it's just a fantastic all-around outdoor knife and as you can see on this one the handle material is amazing so in the photos you don't get the full like feel of the depth of the 3d effect that this the handle has um, in the video here you can definitely see a little more of it in person it's even more of a knockout than what it is right now that you see on the screen there. So, um, and again, if you're watching this on Facebook, you may not be seeing it in HD on the live version. So you can check it out on our YouTube channel or Instagram later if you want to see it in even more detail. Um, so this Bush Hermit, we've got in Yellow River Canyon Shockwood is what we're calling that one. Um, obviously, black liners. Pink pinstripes is not normally something most people are going to go for. However, the way that it sets off the colors in these burls is the perfect choice. Um, I can thank my man Phil IP for that that choice, I think. Right, Phil? Yep. Yep. All right, so uh, there you have it, the Bush Hermit. Yellow River Canyon Shockwood. Absolutely beautiful. Um, oh, and by the way, that one's 8th inch A2, but it has taper tang, as I'm sure that you noticed. Uh, next one coming out is more in the medium size. Uh, this one is the, anybody? No, no, Monarch. So the Monarch, this one's Rosewood. So Rosewood's kind of difficult to take photos of. You can see it a little bit in the video here, just because the color is so deep and dark and rich and it's kind of got a, I hate to say mahogany color. That's what the color is, but it's definitely not mahogany wood. Um, but the rosewood is, is definitely a dark color. It's got a lot of character, but it's a dark color. So it's hard. It's, it's, you know, it's very gentlemanly in my mind. Uh, black liners, lime pinstripes on that. You can see it's got a taper tang. Uh, the taper tang is not over exaggerated on this one, which helps out with the balance quite a bit. Um, so you don't get too much, you know, blade balance on there. It's a real, real even balance as you'll see here in a moment. Um, the Monarch, you a lot of times we'll see with a swedge on top. This one is a swedgeless. Um, it's got uh, eighth inch A2, like I said, taper tang on that. Um, as you can see right here, the handle, if you have a smaller hand, uh, is going to be nice. If you have a larger hand than mine, which I wore, wear large to extra large glove, depending on the glove, uh, it fits fine in my hand, but the handle is a little on the short side. So if you've got a shorter hand or shorter fingers, this one is probably going to be really nice for you. And it's also got a full feel to be such a smaller handle as well. Um, so if you got, uh, if you got the sausage fingers or you got the short hands, um, this one may be the one that you're going to like the most for an everyday carry. So moving on to a, another amazing handle material. This one is the bush finger as Phil calls it, the finger. So this uh, this finger, it's got that magma shock wood on it. Phil IP showed up to look at this one. Uh, that red is fantastic. You can see it a little bit in the video and the photos, but in person, it's just, it's just gorgeous. When you move it around in the light and the way that it catches all the light, uh, absolutely fantastic. That's eighth inch taper tang on that, black, black liners, white pinstripes, as you can see. It's absolutely gorgeous. And you can also see 
why the Bush Bushfinger in particular is uh, one of the most popular models uh, that Andy's ever done. It's actually one of the first that he designed, um, and it's just gotten better over a few iterations. Um, it's just a classic, wonderful bushcrafting knife. Um, it's a little slimmer on the handle uh, than the Bush Hermit that you saw previously is. Um, fantastic overall knife, and that 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 handle that one's going to go real quick. So if you're not on the ball. At 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, sharp when these go live, you're not getting this one. And I can tell you right now, those handle materials are hard to make and hard to get, and especially hard to make them where they look the same. So you're never going to see another one um, quite like this one. So if you're uh, hot for this one, which you should be, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, don't miss a second because you're going to miss it. All right, this next one up, Bloodwood. Got a particular person in, uh, that I know that's probably going to be highly, highly interested in this. You know who you are. Um, Bloodwood is one of my personal favorite woods as well. It's just got a lot of color and a lot of depth to it. It's got a little bit of chatoyance. Some pieces have a little more than, than others. Chatoyance, if you are uh, not familiar with that word, uh, word of the day, um, it basically just means that the light catches uh, different angles in it and catches different. They use it in jewelry a lot, in jewels. Uh, to talk about the effects in jewels. So, uh, Bloodwood on this one, it's a skeletonized full tang, uh, not tapered. Uh, it's 1 8 inch A2, black liners, white pin stripes, mosaic pin there on the fifth pin. Uh, and it's designed, obviously, it's the Nesmuk model. Uh, Nesmuk is another character. If you're not familiar with uh, knife history, uh, you definitely need to look up uh, Nesmuk on Wikipedia and read about Mr. Carver. Uh, Fantastic knife. I like it. I like it a lot. Hmm? Sears. Sears? Sears? I thought it was Carver. George Washington Sears? George Washington. That's why I like having Phil here. George Washington Sears is Mr. Nesmuk. Although his name wasn't Nesmuk, it was a friend of his who was actually a Native American or Indian, if you were, however politically incorrect you'd like to be, um, that that was his name. So he actually stole his name, used it as a pen name, to do all of his writing. Anyway, Wikipedia is your friend. Go look it up. Nesmuk. N-E-S-S-M-U-K. That Bloodwood is amazing. I know I've spent a lot of time on this one. I really like it. I like looking at it. Okay, okay, okay. I'll move on. I'll move on. Next next one up. Next one up. The Big Sneaky. Now, this one is on the endangered species list. Um, it was recently retired to the vault as a pattern um, so the shop's kind of working through a few that they had profiled out. Uh, as you've noticed over the last few weeks, uh, a couple of the retired models are popping up, and that's why. Um, just typically everything in the shop goes in process, so you may have a pattern that's, that's already uh, profiled out that's sitting there for quite some time before it actually gets made into a knife. Um, this one is a thick mama right here. So this one started out life as a 3 16th A2 steel. Uh, it's got a taper tang. It's actually pretty heavily tapered, but because it's so thick to start with, it doesn't look like it's tapered a lot if you're just looking at the uh, pommel there, um, but it's fantastic. But even being a thicker steel, uh, it's going to be a heavy-duty knife, but it's not real super heavy um, because of the way the grind is, because of the swedge on it, and because of the taper tang. It's got a super great balance on it. It's just right there in front of that uh, first set of pins, which you'll see, I think, at the end of this little video section that I shot. Um, but it's just a fantastic knife. It's quarter sewn curly oak, black liners, orange pinstripes. Um, she's thick and she's sexy, fellas. That's the one to get right there. Uh, and again, if you want blade length and overall length specs, go to the website, um, look at the last blog post that we did for Fiddleback Friday. It has all the specs there. Uh, and you can also see a couple of more photos of it as well. Uh, if you're subscribed to the newsletter, you get that automatically every week. So while you're on the site, make sure you do that. So that is the big sneaky, and it was based on the Sneaky Pete model, uh, which also has the asp and wasp in the family as well. But this is the biggest, biggest version of it. As you can see on all the grips, it's comfortable in just about every single grip, but it especially is for that grip right there. So definitely meant for the thumb, thumb right there. Um, where it was a second ago, and it's definitely uh, quite stabby. Sexy, stabby. All the S's are covered. Big sneaky.
I'm starting to sound like Allison. I think I'm around Allison too. Jesus, I'm around Allison too much. Okay, so this one is another one that's on the endangered species list, making making possibly its final appearance. Maybe not. Maybe there's probably a couple more. There might be a couple more profile. Phil says, but uh, this one in particular, three thirty seconds, A two steel, skeletonized, full tang. Uh, this one is what you'll hear a lot of people refer to as a saber grind. It's really not. It's just a low convex grind um, with a convex secondary. Typically, your saber grinds are going to be more like your scandies or flat grinds, that kind of thing. So uh, it is a shorter grind, but because the steel is starting out as a thin stock and it's such a long knife, it's still very slicey. Uh, make no mistake about it. Uh, so that one is in paper bag Burlatex. It's not made of paper bags. I think Phil IP just called it that because uh, it's the color of paper bags. Is that, is that true? That he just Phil just makes it up as he goes, ladies and gentlemen. He just makes it up. So paper bag, Burlatex, uh, oh, yeah. black liners, orange pinstripes. He has confirmed it as the color. I would have called it caramel Burlatex if it was me, but it was already named before it got to me. So I didn't get a choice on that one. So old school lady finger. Sexy, one of the, also one of the first uh, knife designs that Andy did uh, almost 10 years ago, right at 10 years ago. So it's gone through some in, uh, iterations. Uh, there's also a ladyfinger version uh, that has a slightly less tall of a blade and a finger guard. Uh, if you've seen the ladyfinger and you're wondering what the old school ladyfinger is, as a difference, that's it. So ladyfinger, long and lean, as you can, as you can see. Very comfortable in every range of grips you can think of. Um, just an all-around really cool knife. Um, and, of course, you know, I have one personally. I like it. I like it a lot. That one's pretty sexy. I like this particular one a lot. But my favorite this week, I'm going to be partial. I try not to be partial. Try not to embark that on, upon you fine folks. But uh, you can't beat this bullfrog bowie. This thing is... Okay, I'm not going to say the word. It's awesome. It's really cool. Um, I run out of adjectives that I can say on the show. But, what can uh, I say? Huh? What can I say? Phil, you can say anything you want. I think it's badass. It's, Phil, all right, I'll say it. It's badass. Phil says it's badass. It's badass. Sapphire Maple Burl. Looks like a freaking galaxy in there. It's fantastic. So, black liners, thick orange pinstripes uh, that really pop, as you can see from this in the photos, uh, if you check those out. Um, fantastic. Eighth inch A2, taper tang. It's just uh, super duper sweet. So, kind of secretly hoping none of you peeps pick this one up tonight at 9 p.m. Because uh, I, I wouldn't mind taking it home. Would you, Phil? I would take that home. I hope they all sell. I would take her home. I mean, I want them all to sell too, but I'll miss her. I'll miss her. Mm. We can make another one. It's sexy. No, you can't make another one like that. That's Club? true. Yeah, not like that. That one's that one's one in a well, one in a mill. The next one, it might be more badass. But then I can have two. If that one's even more badass, if the next one's even okay. Never mind. We're getting off track. Okay, sexy bullfrog Bowie. Oh, I'm gonna miss her. I know she's gonna go pretty quick. Now. Last but certainly not least, Mr. Joey Berry, JB Knife Works. Okay, you're going to notice on the bolster on this, there's some towel lint. That's my fault. Sorry. Uh, it's not a flaw in the knife, but uh, this thing is pretty awesome. It's the GPK model, which stands for General Purpose Knife. This is kind of the culmination of everything that Joey likes in an everyday carry knife uh, for good reason. And this particular one, um, he's got taper tang on it. He's also got a distal taper on the front, if you notice right there. It's a little thinner as it goes up as well uh, because of the way he ground it, which is amazing. Um, definitely super slicey. Uh, the taper tang is super well done on it. Those maroon liners are awesome. Uh, the bolster on this is walnut, which is sexy. I mean, he just made a really good choice on this side of it. Um, it actually looks like it almost fades into that black canvas micarta uh, that's still in the main part of the handle. It's just super well done. Joey does a great job with this. Uh, CPM 154. I think this one started out life as, yeah, 764. Um, it's just great. Yeah, that's the lint I was talking about. Sorry about that. Tried to wipe it off there, but uh, it's getting a little sticky. So that was my fault. 
Allison, what do you make? It was the sticky comment. She's like a 12 year old. I don't know. What's up with this? Allison, can you come say? Hold on. No, wait. Can you say hi in a minute? Okay. Everybody wants to see Allison all the time. So, uh, black liners, maroon pinstripes. Uh, the blade length on this one I do have handy. It's uh, two and seven eighths on the blade and about seven and a quarter overall. Uh, super knife. If you don't have one of Joey's outdoor knives, go ahead and pick them up. I think his focus is going to shift a little more towards kitchen stuff. So you'll want to pick up his outdoor knives um, before he's not making as many anymore. So CPM 154, can't go wrong. Super duper sexified. Woo, I sound like a 70s radio DJ. That's pretty awesome. Sexified. Um, Allison, here's Allison. Say hi, Allison. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Yes, it's <laughs> it's like that every day. All day. That's Allison. Phil IP. Is that a is that okay, I was making sure he was actually pulling out a fiddle back. Oh. Hiking fiddle buddy back song. show. Oh, hey, check this out. All right, hiking buddy. The F two. So if you guys like comparisons, hopefully I'm lining it up well enough where you can see. Same handle shape as you can see. Ooh, camera's backwards. I'm having trouble there. So that's it. That's it for the show today. Hope you guys enjoyed what you got to see. Uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All these knives go live. Uh, if it's anything like it was last week, you better get there early and you better be quick. So uh, only having 10 this week, plus Joey's makes 11. Um, they're going to move pretty quick, especially from this batch. So if you have any questions, uh, wherever you are watching this, make sure you hit us up there or send us an email at support at fiddlebackforge.com. Do it before 9 p.m. because if it's close to that time, we're going to be bombarded and you're going to be too late. You're going to miss out on what you want. Um, but we'd be happy to help you with anything that you want and any questions you might have. We shall see you next week. And until then, life's too short carry an ugly knife. So check out some awesome stuff from the shop.